sounds really simple and straightforward, Johan. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't it? It really does when you just, yeah, sum it up like that. Okay, so should we start from kind of the... Uh, the $64 million uh, question. Yeah, let's start with the $64 million question. Which was that we were saying, you know, even if you created an app for someone, a friend or a relative or something, or yeah. someone who, um, you know, has got a problem, say, and you know, I was saying, like, catering, managing temporary staff, if you've done that, it's really good. They love it. It works. It's replaced their paper and pen system or their Excel spreadsheet. How do you then go about promoting that and selling it to other companies, small companies who you know have the same issue and they would really find it valuable? Well, in that sense, um, I understand the question as how do you sell that product you have built for that specific business case? Um, and that makes it a lot easier than just selling software in general, because you have one customer have proven uh, that they can work with the software and they can uh, write uh, testimonials saying that this has helped us doing this a lot easier, a lot faster. We've saved so many hours. We have this kind of uh, stuff. Uh, uh, we have so many temporary employees and uh, we can manage them using this system in a smart way. Can I stop you there? So yep. when you say that, uh, they, they've said all this and their testimonials, where would you expect them? Where would you expect to put this? How do you know? That, that would be on a dedicated website for that system. Okay. And then I would try to identify similar businesses um, okay. and perhaps people running those businesses. All right. And if I could target them with email or uh, a phone call, I would start doing that in the beginning at least until I had about 10 different customers. Okay. Um, so, so that's kind of the easy one then. So, and then you brought up the, but then there's just selling software. How do you? Um... So now, now when you identify these different um, businesses, um, because you can look them up in the yellow pages or on Google or, or try to find those, then you you have uh, five or ten contacts that you can call and, and talk to them and see if they're interested in trying the system. Uh, and they could try it for free for a month or two just to see how it works. Um, but after that, let's say out of these ten, you get one active customer. So now you have two active customers. Mm -hmm. And then you have an idea of what kind of problem these uh, users have. So you could actually start doing a, a marketing campaign on Facebook or Google, uh, just a simple one that links people to your website and or, or LinkedIn, I suppose, is a really good place to find specific uh, niche uh, people who work in different areas. Uh, and market to them. And I would try to market, um, let's say, for a month or two uh, with a kind of fairly low uh, budget. Uh, let's say, uh, at most, uh, 200 euro, euro a week or yeah. something. Uh, to see if you can get people on board just by getting them through the web page. And uh, then I think uh, the rest of, of um, that marketing strategy, we kind of have to create an episode for, for every single piece of how you do that. But yeah, okay. that's, that's the general idea of uh, how to sounds grow your really, business. Sounds pretty simple and straightforward, Johan. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> it really does when you just, yeah, sum it up like that. Okay. So LinkedIn, do you have a premium membership for that? Do you need a premium membership for the sort of things that you would say we would be talking about in, you know, the, if, the you, you, not not to do marketing to buy ads you don't need a premium membership i uh, i believe i, I actually okay. honestly haven't tried to to do run ads on linkedin because uh, okay. i've haven't had that specific target audience that i could i believe i could target so if you targeted if you used facebook then yeah but that's a, for, for a completely different type of service right um, okay yeah so um, so then you need to be using the right channel then for your but, audience. But you, you could also use a premium membership because then you can search for these people and contact them directly through LinkedIn. Right. Um, but there, there's a complete strategy for how to uh, approach people on LinkedIn as well. Yeah. Because if you just uh contact them and and say oh i i want you to have a look at my system for managing people then they mm -hmm. will just uh, block you and and don't talk to you ever again yeah. so uh unless you are really uh hitting the nail uh, in your search okay okay so then the just selling a service not quite so easy if you you know if you again like like unicorn you produce software yeah how do you go about marketing something like that or not necessarily marketing is it, I, I think i'm talking about a step back from marketing i'm just talking about um letting people know you're there i mean it is yeah. marketing but you know and not even with an intent to i want to sell you something just we are here and we do this yeah in case you need it Exactly. Just even getting to that, yeah. that actually would be lovely. Yeah, and that, that's what I've been trying to do the last two year, uh, or trying to actually define where, who, what, uh, and and uh, how to do that. And the, the first thing you need to know is what is the value that you are providing to your potential customers? And in, in software development, since we can develop any type of software, uh, yeah. it's, it's hard to kind of nail down a niche or something. But mm -hmm. of course, you could try to, to uh, focus on a specific niche and, and learn how those businesses work. Uh, we are, for instance, um, very focused on lo logistics okay. uh, and transportation uh, because we we got a lot of uh, those uh, customers already mm -hmm. um, so we can if we find another customer who works with logistics we know the lingo we know what they're talking about we we uh, already know a lot of the sizes of uh, pallets and uh, packages and uh, naming conventions for things so they don't have to teach us every single thing when we are building a system we can just sit down okay what type of system what what kind of uh, what part of your business should this system manage and mm -hmm. then we we already know that kind of business but if we're going to restaurants for instance then there might be a completely different set of things, uh, yeah. names for different types of foods, uh, uh, categories on when the food should be prepared, how long you can man uh, keep it in the freezer before you have to use it and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So th that's a completely different set of uh, questions. Um, so it could be a good idea to niche down on a specific niche and then you could e more easily find the people that you can help. Yeah. Uh, so what you need to do, uh, as you say, to show that you are here is to try to promote and, and uh, show the value you can provide by providing the value. Um, 
and uh, that's not always so easy and that's one of the things that we are trying to do with these casual conversations uh, because we are talking about software development we are talking about how to manage a team how to uh, do things that our potential customers do uh, and and then we hope that they might be interested in in looking at this content and getting to know us and when they got to know us then they might also call us and ask us if we can help them do some software development yeah now i mean everything you say there that all makes sense to me and it's stuff that i'm aware of familiar with yeah it's that and I think probably most people who watch this would say exactly the same thing. Like, yeah, we're, yeah, we're aware of this stuff. It's that whatever the next step is, there, there's something missing between what you're saying here and the list of, you know, I don't know 20 things to do to uh, improve your online presence or something you know something that will come through from some marketing thing i've, I've signed up for <laughs> there, there's just a gap there's a gap somewhere that i i i'm missing yeah that's how i feel i don't um, know I, I've, I've listened to what you said and like, yep okay what do i do now then what what do i do what do i do what does a unicorn do to make ourselves more visible yeah you you need to figure out who you want to reach yeah. and and where those people are okay are, are they on facebook or linkedin or do you have to go to a fair or do you have to call okay. them because they only answer the phone um mm, Maybe you can find them through Google because there you can make ads that target specific search terms. So you know that people searching for um, my Excel sheet broke down again uh, are looking for a, uh, someone that can help them build a real IT system. Uh, and, so this is my homework then. Who do you want to reach? Yeah, who do you want to know that you exist? Yeah, who, who is your ideal customer? Okay. <laughs> okay. Do, right. uh, you probably have a few customers that would qualify to be an ideal customer. Or, or We've got some lovely customers. Yeah. We love our customers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <there is> a, <laughs> We're more like so, that. <laughs> so, so what you do is you, you uh, pick out a few of them and then you kind of mush them together into one profile and say that this is the perfect person if i see this person it's my obligation to tell <laughs> them about wow. what we can do for them okay a person with uh, this type of business this amount of employees this type of revenue uh, um, uh, who work with this uh, within this field or have uh, uh, this type of systems already or, or what have you something okay. that can clearly define who is it you're looking to help okay well it sounds relatively simple it's not i know but that i've, put, I've written these they've written these down because these are my homework okay yeah the next time we chat <laughs> <laughs> could be a while uh, yeah. uh, in theory, I might have, um, I might be coming in and speaking to you and saying, okay, we know who we want to reach, <clears throat> we know where they are, yeah. and um, yeah, I I'm obliged now to contact these people in some way, okay? Okay. I think that's more than enough. I, I, can't, I can't take on any more than that, actually, <laughs> at the moment. Well, let's start there, then. Having, because I know, because I've tried and failed to do yeah. this type of thing in the past, I know this is actually really hard and this is going to take a significant amount of time and effort. So um, I might be emailing you for some yeah. pointers. 
on yeah, this. And then we so you've done that. You, you've you've successfully done this yourself, then. Um, to a degree, I, th I think I think you're never completely successful, yeah. or or you you never completely finish because the image you are trying to create is an abstraction. Yes. It, it's not the perfect picture of of the person you're looking for. Uh, mm. You have to kind of uh, draw some boundaries and say of course we can help everyone through the spectrum but mm -hmm. our ideal customer would prefer we be within these ranges and uh, then, then you have to make some some decisions yourself to to say that okay here here is where i want to start to look and then the next step will be to to validate the the, um, the profile that you're looking for uh, to actually somehow market to them con uh, contact them or uh, uh, see if they respond well to your communication okay that will be our next conversation okay yeah yeah identifying how i'm going to go about doing that yeah right okay thanks very much thank you sorry about the camera oh no problem <laughs> okay bye bye